Axe Wolf, Wolf Mix 101. This one isn't so much looking at the Wolf Mix W1 DMX controller, but this time looking at the visualizer that you use alongside it. If you want to use visualizer, there's two great ways. absolutely out of this world school dances then a lot of the time a customer really wants to look and see what it's going to look like beforehand and you can either send it as a picture or record it as a video for them to see as you roll the visualizer around for them the other reason is it means you can program your lighting without having to get every piece of lighting equipment that you have out and set up in a room somewhere whilst you sit and program it Without further ado though, let's jump straight into the visualizer, how to put it together and how to use it. There we go. Right, when you open the visualizer, you get a box a little bit like this. You need to go up to the file and new. No, you don't want to save what's there and then you can go into and you're ready to go into the build state which is this button here that toggles between build and final view and you're met down here with different things going on now the ambient lighting I usually push right up so that I can see what I'm doing and I don't mess with anything else until I've got things in. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can add just fixtures or you can be really, really clever and add trussing and stages and scenery, etc. as you go. Either way, it's pretty much the same way. When you look at these, you've got, you'll see more when it's populated. There's a top view, a front view and a right hand view. This is what allows you to move things around in the visualizer in this final view so that it ends up in the right place because it's a 3d environment you need these three views to be able to do it with so the first thing i'm going to do is add a couple of pieces of truss so if i go to add objects it opens up my files within the files i find truss and within truss let's have a look some tri truss two meter pieces of it Let's double click it and add that. Now you can see how it's turned out. It's ended up standing on its end in the middle of the floor. So the first thing you want to do is take the front view. You can see that's the floor of the room and it's just falling through the bottom of the floor. So what I'm gonna do is pick it up with this one and raise it above the floor level. Next thing we want to do is come down to here where the properties are at the bottom we're going to roll it up and you've got rotation what you need to do is take the rotation and you can see that turns it one way through 360 degrees the same again the same again it's turning it all on its axis so what we're going to do is turn it on its axis so that it's the right way up and if I turn it on its axis A reset there we go turn it on its axis that way and I scroll in you can see it's a piece of truss and it's apex up which is how I usually set gear up and looking at this bear in mind this is a 10 meter by 5 meter these squares 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 meters wide they appear when you put an object in and it's one, two, three, four, five meters high. And at the moment, it's 123 centimeters off the floor, a meter 23. I wanna take it up to three meters in the air like this. So we just roll it up. There we go, and we've got a piece of truss three meters in the air. Now the real easy way of doing this, if you want to add another two pieces of truss that are in the same orientation like that, is we right click 
like that. We copy, come down into the blank space and we paste it and another one appears. This time we're just going to move it left to right so that it's next to and we just pull it across a little bit like that because it appears in the same place in the same orientation and we're going to go for one more piece of truss copy and paste it in in the blank space again second piece of truss appears and you just grab it with the top view or you can even work on the front view because that gives you a left to right as well and we move it along there we go that's six meters of trussing across the middle of a room if you click on it on anywhere but an object within the 3D viewer then that will then allow you to scroll in and move around and take a look at it in the 3D environment and as you can see the truss is in a straight line it's pretty much joined together I'm not going to be that careful with it because I'm just explaining to you how we're doing things the next thing you'll want to do is you want to hang some of your lighting on there so let's go into this one here looks like a spotlight and if you hold on there it says add fixture so what we're doing is we're going to click add fixture like this my poor computer has a heart attack as it chugs away and looks through the files there we go the fixtures come up unfortunately I'm running it on a very very basic computer but as you can see it is coping and the easiest thing I know the ADJ fixtures inside out quite well so let's look for American DJ we'll lower that within there there's all the different series or you can actually type in here the fixture that you want we're looking for the ADJ inner pocket series dink that comes down inner pocket beams inner pocket spots we'll go for the inner pocket beam we'll select that now the next thing it asks you is which mode it is so the inner pocket spot operates on either for instance a six channel an eight channel or a 12 channel mode the modes correspond to mode one mode two mode three from the instruction book within your fixtures so you pick the mode that you want we'll go for the real easy one of mode one the next thing it's asking you the DMX universe well you're probably using one universe so it will be DMX universe one the first DMX channel of that fixture well at the moment I've got nothing added into my wolf mix box it's completely blank so therefore I'll start it at DMX channel one how many of these fixtures do I want I tell you what we'll add two of them and it's index number one so number one is going to be the first inner spot and you'll see later on why we need to know that next thing you need to do is do not click OK it is click patch when you click patch that patches it onto the universe and as you can see up there your two fixtures appear really nicely and then you click OK if I roll out they appear halfway up the room next thing we want to do is get those fixtures onto the truss so select the first one and the front of the stage we're looking at here gives me the up and down movement I can see that it's already appeared by looking at the right view of the stage which would be looking at it if I look in the visualizer it's that is that view the front view is what you're looking at now and if I roll it round like that the top view is what you're looking at there I usually work from the front and the side it's rare I have to use the top view so what I do is select the fixture I want to move I'm going to move it down and I know that truss was at three meters so trussing is approximately 50 uh, sorry is approximately 30 centimeters deep so if I go two meters and 60 ish two meters and 70 is in the middle of the truss two meters and 60 there we go it pretty much looks like it's attached to the truss now if that truss is further forwards or further backwards what I do is I turn it to the side like that I grab my side view and I can move that fixture then forwards in the 3d environment or backwards in the 3d environment so let's line it back up again see how easy it is to get it wrong line it up you can see over the top of the truss 
little bit further and then we're going to grab hold of it with a front view and lower it down onto the truss like that that's the two fixtures right now those fixtures aren't facing in the right direction when they've gone into the 3d environment so what we do is we come down here and we want the middle one if i remember correctly yep you can just see it turning around if i zoom in and that is going to turn the fixture around by 90 degrees at the moment it's facing that way we now want it facing forwards when the fixtures appear moving heads etc always face the way that the base would be mounted so now we've got it facing forwards we'll select that one and we'll do the same with the rotation down here like that spin it 90 degrees and now you can see they're in the right place what I'm going to do is then go over to my Wolf Mix controller like this. As you can see, it's in a Blake's blank state. I've just loaded up an empty slot ready to work on. I'm going to say fixture setup list. I want to add fixtures. We're going to go down to American DJ. I did cover this in the Wolf Mix 101 series, one of the first lessons of adding fixtures. And then we need to go down to I4 Inno Spot or Inno Beam we've got there. EFGI Inno Spot Inno Beam. And I'm just checking the fixture that I used here by going it back into the 3D environment. Dropping down fixtures, in a pocket beam is what we're looking for. So if we go back to the wolf mix, in a pocket spot, in a pocket spot, pocket fusion, in a pocket beam Q4, We'll try that one. That should be the one. What we're going to do is we're going to want to add two of those. There's your modes. And just checking myself on that. There we go. Yep, that's correct. And it's mode one, 10 channels. I'm going to load it onto group A like that. Bear in mind we have covered this and if I go back to the 3D visualizer you can see that it's all jumped to life and that is your fixture added. I should then be able to show you that if I go back to the home page I'm going to Go into the colour effect, give it a quick rainbow effect. Uh, we'll do it between red, green, blue, just so that you can see. And I wanted to affect that. There you go. You can see the beams are being affected. So you are now controlling that 3D environment with the trussing that you've put in for decoration and the spotlights that you've added or the moving beams that you've added. It is that simple to add them. If ever you get into a pickle, I'm just going to blow the screen over so that you can see. And if something isn't working, the first thing you need to do, just like in real life, is check your DMX addresses. The way to do that is to go to the Fixtures folder, drop the Fixtures folder down, drop the fixture down that you're working on. If there's other fixtures in there, you'll see in a pocket spot, Cheve, IR305s, etc., etc. We've just got the pocket spots in. There's the two of them, one and two. If I click on it, it highlights it in all the 3D environments. And then if you click on the fixtures tab down here, that'll tell you it's patched in. It's on DMX Universe 1 and it's DMX Address 1. There's 10 channels to that fixture. So if I click on the second one, there we go. I know I've got it right because the next one is starting at channel 11 and will run through to 10 channels later. The position wizard, I don't use. The properties is literally to move it around. If you've used a piece of furniture, 
so if we want to add something new let's have a look what have we got that we can add into it decorative objects and furniture tables and we'll add a big table there we go you can see the table roll the 3d environment back so that we can see and once again that table is appeared sticking through the floor so in the front view which is what we're looking at now we'll pick it up Dink. So that basically is how to add fixtures, how to patch them in, how to get your DMX addresses right and you saw how quick and easy it was to move literally from the 3D environment into the Wolf Mix W1 and moving backwards and forwards until you've got all your fixtures dialed in. I hope that helps you out a little bit with the visualizer and if there's anything you need to know once again just give me a shout leave a comment and i'll get it filmed for you until the next time see you soon